Leg week. Oh, and before we start, of course, do support creators on Patreon, so check out mine in the description. Alright then, well, you know, it's kind of interesting that after all this time, all these years, I don't think that I made a dedicated outfitting video for basically how to outfit ships and what each thing means and, and well, explaining what everything does so that you don't get lost in all the mix of the numbers and whatnot else. Let's take that dog shit ass scout, because that damn thing doesn't get enough screen time, I guess. So let's go. I'm bored now! Also, you might notice that I am in Odyssey. Well, considering that everything is gonna be transferred to Odyssey's UI version, despite how... Unintuitively annoying and um, bad. Yeah, bad is the word that I would use. Um, we'll, we'll still get it and uh, like it or not, uh, we're gonna have to deal with it, I guess, unless developers really actually realize that it's not very good and uh, change it. But what are the chances, right? You open up the outfitting, right? The all sorts of things already everywhere. And, well, you don't understand anything that happens. Let's then start with the simplest things. Here on the bottom, you're, you basically see your credit balance you know, on normal stuff and you see the basic power meter of two bars the total power right retracted is on the top and deployed is on the bottoms you know whenever you bring out your you know mining lasers or whatever else is in your hard points equipped and utility slots that will count towards the deployed power usage and the retracted is for the one that is uh, closed in and so on and so forth so basically you know let, let me just show you what happens when you have enough power to move off your landing pad but not enough to sustain the weapons. Okay, let's say you finally outfitted your ship and you're finally outside of the starboard. Your ship works, you know, everything is moving, you're not dying, anything, you know, just as normal ship, right? Then you, let's say, want to shoot at something or accidentally even press the hard point uh, deployment button, you know, or shooting button, which automatically deploys the weapons. You go forward as you want to go and uh, land, let's say, yeah, there we go, and you boost, and then accidentally press the button. Thrusters are out. Everything, everything is off suddenly. What the hell is going on? And, well, unfortunately, you're ramming the station and almost dying. And everything's off. You can't move everything, right? Well, the reason is that because of the excess power requirement, your ship is just simply unable to, well, do anything. Because the power, um, well, it's power uh, over limit, if you will. So, what you can do to mitigate this is simply put different uh, modules at different priorities, as you can see here. And that can save you quite a bit. Or you can manually just disable them and that will also work. So yeah, making sure that you have enough power, that's a good thing. Alright then, now back to the stats. Okay, so the next couple of things or information pieces that you'll see are, well, basically the speed, top and boost, right? The self self-explanatory. Uh, your pitch and roll, those uh, angles and then speeds or other uh, angles per speed time, blah, 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 blah. That's also relatively easy to understand if you have some concept of how airplanes work. So pitch usually is the one that you will feel the most. So if you're looking for a ship that actually not a brick wall, try to look for the pitch speed the most. Rolling speed is always the fastest. And after that, the your turn rate speed. That is a turning left to right. That usually, well, in early dangerous at least, is the slowest speed of all. Anyways, after that, the jump range for the minimum, current, and maximum. The minimum is the once it's loaded fully with the cargo bay and so on and so forth, uh, if you have that, of course. The current one is with the current weight. That also includes the fuel weight, or how empty the fuel tank is. Yes, fuel actually does prevent you from getting to the maximum jump range of the times. So, there you go. And the maximum jump range is the maximum jump range. There you go. That's simple, right? Then turning on to the next portion of the specs, you have total mass, um, cargo capacity, and fuel capacity. Fuel capacity... Pfft, 
you don't really need to particularly worry yourself about because every ship uses a fuel slightly differently so usually basically just keep whatever fuel tank you have that's it it'll do just fine after that you have cargo capacity which is a useful indicator for how much uh, cargo slots you have essentially a setup so each of these cargo slots increase uh, the, 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 or the cargo racks increases the cargo capacity as for the total mass now this one well you technically wouldn't worry too much about unless you really try to stretch every little bit of your ship uh, when it comes to thrusters uh, they are responsible for allowing the ship to fly with a certain amount of cargo capacity in the stats of th the thruster you can see basically what is the minimum what's the optimal and what's the maximum as for the optimal mass that basically determines the best movement speed if you will on uh, the yaw turn rate if you will um, the heavier the ship is the you know slower it will turn essentially and the multipliers are about the same. Again, you don't particularly need to care about these particular stats. It's uh, just min-maxing stuff overall. Anyways, moving then back to the simplest stats. Next page, we have total damage. Um, personally speaking, also don't need to worry about because there are resistances that you need to take in account of the ship's uh, shields, hull, and so on and so forth. Most of the time, you're going to be engineering stuff that will overcomplicate things anyway. So for now, keep that sort of damage in mind, I guess, but never never gauge that as the actual damage that your ship is going to be doing precisely for the targets you're going after. As for damage per second, again, the same uh, self-explanatory thing, highest armor uh, piercing, right? So that also determines on, you know, what kind of weapons you have on board, because you can literally put whatever weapons you want with a uh, better penetrative power. Let's take uh, Railgun, for example. Yeah, you can see the penetrative power of Railgun is quite higher than whatever laser there was. Then moving on, we have power distri uh, for to uh, total distributor draw. Uh, the number, if you really want to crunch the numbers in the outfitting, sure, you can just look at the maximum power and then calculate it, but usually I just look at the simple bar here and see whether or not I am overboard. And if I am, well, I choose a different power uh, plant. So we got the thermal load. Um, Again, we don't have a stat of maximum thermal load that you have in your ship, or rather how much thermal load your ship is capable of sustaining. However, there's the value. Basically, the higher the value, the faster your ship will be overheating whenever you're going to be using, generally speaking, all the weapons, all the things on board. Yeah, the lower the number, the well, cooler the ship runs. And total weapon mass. Um, well, it's kind of useful, I suppose, to get uh, information as to how much your weapon weapons way. The more weight, of course, your ship has, the lesser jump range it has, but uh, uh, generally speaking, no one cares about it. <laughs> Alright, moving on then. We got a uh, more important uh, statistic that is the shield strength, right? So this number actually does matter. You see, the higher the shield, the better. Generally speaking, each ship has uh, slightly different uh, shield ratings and so on and so forth, but the general number is very useful. It's basically shield health. As for the rate for broken and standard, it's regeneration rate. Right, so let's take a shield for example, right? We have some sort of a shield here, right? It, its total strength is 104 units. Now, the broken regeneration rate is 3.7 uh, units per second. Now, shields come back online when they reach 50% from the broken rate. They start at that 50% and then regenerate upwards to 100 after that. Now, obviously, they break after zero. The bigger the number, the better it is. Of course, you can calculate how long it takes for you to actually get back uh, that broken shield by just dividing the half of the shield strength with this uh, regeneration rate. That's... That's simple. That's how long your ship is going to have to wait until you get the shields back. After that, the standard regeneration essentially is a, a rate at which you regain the shields after it has come back online. And the resistances. Simple as that. Uh, the first one... Oh, gods, what does that mean? That should be the thermal, right? That... No, wait. This is the kinetic value. That's the laser stuff. And that's the explosive. Did I get... Yes, I... See... It's a lot easier to just mouse over the shield itself rather than have an icon-based menus. <sighs> Anyways, moving on. And for the integrity. Integrity basically is your ship's overall health. So that is the hull health, including, of course, the armoring and so on and so forth. Now, armor rating. Now, that is the... 
let's see if I remember correctly, that was armor uh, or hull hardness, essentially. This value interacts with uh, the damage piercing value and determines how much damage overall you're gonna get. And also how much damage your internal modules will get uh, in combination, of course, with the damage itself. Now, of course, resistances in the same way, you can see they are slightly different. Overall, armor rating for each ship is slightly different. Sure, the higher the value, the better overall, I suppose, but considering that the highest armor rating is for the type 10, uh, no one cares about that. And then we're back to this menu. All right, so let's start outfitting the ship in that case. So what do you do or how do you do things? Well, these days, well, the menu has changed quite a bit. You have slightly different UI from the horizons, which is a questionable thing, but regardless, moving on. So, well, let's start then with the hard points, your weapons. Right, so each ship has different types of hard points, essentially the medium, large, small, and the huge. There are four types of four sizes, essentially. Each designated with a class. Class 1, small, class 2, medium, class 3, large, and class 4, huge. So you click on the slot, and you have a whole option slew of weapons. Not, well, depending on what station you're in, but you have a whole slew of items to choose from. Now, what are the best weapons and what are the best builds? That is a big and wide topic, and we'll probably get to that eventually, but for first, obviously, we need to, well, learn what everything is. So let's pick any kind of a weapon. Let's just pick, let's say, beam laser. You can see the icon right there. That signifies the, uh, where was it? The stupid icons here down below. Um, basically, what type of damage it does. Um, through engineering, again, you can kind of change what attributes it does and blah, blah, blah. But let's just stick with the simplest thing. Just pick a weapon and you see, not counting, of course, your stored modules for some weird fucking reason. You have stored modules already here, but anyways. So what you got here are well, multiple types of uh, and sizes of weapons. Uh, well, which one is what and what does everything mean? Oh. So each weapon and module, as a matter of fact, has a class. This one's, for example, class 2. And the grade. Um, the grade designates the quality, I suppose, of the item. That would be D-rated. The higher the grade, the more efficient and, well, better the item is. However, for weapons, you these mean absolutely nothing. The only number that you really care for is the size, because the grades, they kind of do designate the amount of damage in comparison, right? For example, let's uh, let's say I equip a beam laser here, right? And then try to replace it with, uh, there we go, the other one, right? You can see a couple of stat changes, sure. Uh, come on, come on, yeah, there we go. You can see a couple of stat changes because of the lower damage per second, however more efficient uh, overall uh, stats, you can see the grade is still lowered. Honestly, that's a leftover from back in the day. These days, it really doesn't matter, as I said previously. Now, what does matter, of course, with every weapon you can see are well, multiple stats. Of course, the weight is for those that are conscious about their jump ranges, but if you're gonna be make combat ship, then well, weight really won't matter too much. But in any case, uh, integrity essentially is the health point points of each module. Now, remember, you can damage your opponent's weapons so far that they are destroyed, or rather, no longer functional, which prevents them from using it. As a matter of fact, missiles do incredible amount of damage to any module, be that internal or external, so you can have some fun with uh, literally just making your opponent so crippled they can't return or even move. After that, the power draw, which is, uh, as I showcased, the setting you can easily check out here. And after that, damage per second, a little bit more deceptive, but uh, it will work for about estimation of uh, weapons capabilities. Power distributor draw, uh, or distributor draw overall is how much power does each shot or continuous use of this weapon, how much of it will it draw from the available power from all the weapons. So yeah, if you don't have enough power or your ship can't generate enough power, 
you will run out of power overall to shoot the weapons. So keeping an eye on this one is a good thing, however, again, with engineering it can get really weird. Anyways, thermal load. Here's uh, the same thing that I previously mentioned, armor piercing again, uh, and uh, the, the interesting thing here is the maximum range. All the lasers, in fact, all but the kinetic weapons have the maximum range of 3000 meters. And of course the damage type is uh, thermal. The damage fall off, yes, Elite Dangerous does actually have damage fall off as well. If you played Planetside like me, it should be easy concept to grasp, but basically after the said range, damage will proportionally drop until it's, I think, zero. Yeah, completely zero at the maximum stage. However, again, with engineering, you can make it so that there is no damage fall off at all. And finally, the weapons type. Gimbaled, uh, turreted, and supports multi-crew, that's... Ignore that, multi-crew sucks. And fixed. Alright, so basically, fixed weapon, well, it does what it says on tin. It just shoots straight where you aim and that's it. It doesn't move. After that, we have gimbaled, which will be tracking your opponent or the target to a certain degree within a cone. It doesn't have a full, you know, 180 degree motion, but it will track the target within a certain cone. So these are the absolute easiest weapons to use and overall they are a good balance between fixed weapons and turreted ones. And finally, the turreted weapons. They will be shooting automatically, unless of course you set the setting to act like a fixed weapon. They also have uh, additional settings to only shoot the target or respond to any incoming damage. Regardless, they are automated weapons, so if you want to just do AFK farming, they are literally there. Or you just simply don't have the capability of turning your ship, like with the Type 9 or Type 10. These might actually be far more effective than a gimbal ship if you can't turn fast enough against an opponent. However, because they constantly shoot, you can't order them to stop shooting whenever an opponent deploys countermeasures and well, you just waste your time shooting at the dead space. If you Overall, by default, turreted weapons always have the lowest amount of damage, while the fixed ones have the highest damage. Turreted ones are the easiest to use, while the fixed ones are incredibly hard. So always, I personally go with the gimbaled weapons if need be. Now for the kinetic weapons, you can see it basically has the same idea. You have gimbaled, you have turreted, you have fixed weapons, and each has a slightly different statistics, but generally the same idea applies, uh, turreted being the easiest uh, to use and so on and so forth. Anyways, stat-wise, it's about the same. Generally speaking, kinetic weapons, uh, mechanical pew-pew uh, projectile weapons, first of all, they have ammo so once they run out of ammo you, well, you either you synthesize more of it or you need to go and resupply and their operational time often is well far lower than let's say something that doesn't have ammo at all being the lasers so if you're going for npc killing bounty hunting and so on and so forth i highly recommend going with the lasers absolutely because well they can shoot indefinitely as long as you provide enough power but for kinetics well in pvp depending on what your build is, they can be incredibly powerful because, well, they take basically no power draw or distributed draw to operate. Of course, depending on what type it is and so on and so forth, but they still will always be lesser power demanding. And the power-wise or damage-wise, they are quite interesting as well. You have the fire rate as well, clip size, maximum ammo and so on and so forth. Basic, basic weapon things. Also here with the torpedoes, you can see the shot speed, the amount of no, speed that the projectile will be traveling at. Unlike lasers or rail guns, these are projectile weapons which need to travel to your target and 250 meters a second, as a matter of fact, is a boost speed of basically the lowest and slowest ships. So it's pretty hard to hit with the torpedoes if you're, you know, not careful and whatnot else, or you're not being cheeky with your st strategies, if you will. Damage-wise, it's, you know, very high and so on and so forth, but torpedoes are basically an interesting weapon, because it only has one shot, essentially. So you blow your load and that's it. You, you, that's it. You need to go and resupply. You can't even synthesize torpedoes. Moving then on to another slot. 
Now let's then go with the utility stuff. Right, so here you can choose not that many things, but some pretty useful ones. First of all, chaff. Now, whenever you deploy chaff, it scrambles the targeting of turreted and gimbaled weapons. Now, of course, you can switch both gimbaled and turreted weapons to fixed mode by either untargeting the target and shooting just the point blank or setting some settings in this, you know, settings. But the point is, this basically helps against the targeting weapon. It will, however, not help against missiles. And that's where ECMs come in. Well, the, the bottom line is, no one uses ECMs. It, there's a better way to deal with missiles, in my opinion, or torpedoes. So, no one uses it. It's woefully underperforming and uh, it's very useless. Just don't. Please don't. Uh, as for experimental, you have the shutdown field neutralizer and xeno scanner. Well, again, just like every other stat, you have essentially just uh, well, basics about it. Charge time, you know, how, how fast it will work and blah blah blah. Of course, the mass, integrity, power draw and all that stuff. Um, this is about Xeno fighting or the, the Targoid fighting, so you might sometimes use it, but as a matter of fact, now that I think of it, no one really does use it. Unless you're in a really slow ship, but even then, I'd say it's uh, better to just occupy some something else in the utility slot rather than a shutdown neutralized. Xeno scanner, well, that allows you to scan the... Well, the Xenos, if you will, uh, specifically Targoids, to see what type they are, and of course see what stats they have, like what hearts are exerted and so on and so forth, but basically the details about the boss fight. After that you have heatsink. Uh, it's a very useful thing if you're going over heat or, well, just planning to go over heat uh, at some point. There are some builds with very high heat generating weapons that shoot from time to time and through use of heat sinks, you are able to mitigate the negatives of uh, literally cooking yourself, which is very useful oftentimes. Then kill warrant scanner. It used to be that it was better, but these days it can be useful. Whenever you're hunting pirates or anyone that is wanted, by using this scanner on them, you can get a little bit of extra bounty potentially. Manifest scanner. Now this is good for pirates or whenever you need to get something out of uh, somebody. Basically, it allows you to scan the chip and get information what is in their cargo hull. Uh, point defense. Now this is the exact thing that will deal with missiles. Uh, unless, of course, we're talking about pack counts. But regardless, the point is you strap one of these and you can stop worrying about most of the missiles at least. It basically acts like a, well it is as a matter of fact, a turreted weapon which will automatically target whatever incoming missile projectiles might be uh, heading your way. And then the pulse wave analyzer. Now this thingamajig is basically for mining, helps you to see what rocks glow and are full of goodies and what are not. Shield boosters. Now this is the booster that actually matters the most or the thing that matters the most for the utilities in my opinion obviously if you have shields you equip it and it boosts your shields uh, simple as that you can see the percentages of how much each does what and they do consume quite a lot of power so be careful about that and finally the wake scanners now these are well, no one uses them, frankly speaking, uh, in very niche cases, yes. In any ways, this scanner scans a high wake. That is, whenever somebody jumps to a different system, you can scan their so-called high wake and see where exactly did they jump to. Now then, moving on to the core internals. Now, well, here you will see exactly the same layout for every ship. These settings don't change at all. All. So, let's start with the bulkheads. Here, with every ship, you're gonna see different armor plating. Uh, by default, every ship is equipped with uh, the lightweight alloys. They have absolutely no extra armor or anything like that. It's just basic stuff. After that, you have the reinforced alloys, military grade, and mirrored surface and uh, reactive surface. All these three are, well, frankly speaking, the same thing. They offer the same amount of hull. The difference is just that the military grade is the cheapest and also pretty much the best one, well, mostly because it is the cheapest. Unless you're really going for the resistance build, you might pick one or the other one, but they are grossly overpriced compared to military grade. Look at that. 3 million for just the same amount of health, and all of a sudden you can double it, even almost triple the price for just simply having slightly different resistances. Nah, personally, I find it rather absurd to pick any of these two. Again, unless you're making specific build, which I don't recommend. 
And then the power plant. Well, this is, well, relatively self-explanatory. There's just not much to say. It just generates a certain amount of heat. It has its own integrity. It has its own mass. And, of course, the power it generates. The interesting thing, though, you might have probably noticed already that, well, there are these grades. Now we can finally talk about exactly what they mean. A graded, B graded, C, D and E graded items. What are the differences? Well, if you examine the data and information that is provided to you by each, you might actually spot the differences between each. Now, to save you some time, I'll just simply tell you that E-rated is the one that is usually the cheapest, D-rated is the one that is always the lightest, C-rated is what I call the compromise, B-rated is the heaviest but more powerful than C, and A-rated is, well, the best. So, depending on what you need for the ship, equip what you got. Also, you might notice that I have some Guardian hybrid power plant stuff, and that is experimental stuff that I gathered from the personal narrative, the tech brokers, that is. They have their own uses, I would say, but uh, I would say engineered versions are always better. And then we have the thrusters. Again, A, B, C, D and E rated things come to mind. Now here you can easily see the stats that are provided and what each does or what are the limits of each. And of course, if you equip, as a matter of fact, a too low of a thruster, you won't be able to equip suddenly all the things that you want to equip on your ship, like cargo racks and so on and so forth, because it will be saying, well, your ship is over the limit. So always going with the highest thruster will both will produce a more maneuverable ship as well as more carry capacity. As for the frameshift drive, literally the thing that allows you to jump from system to system. Through engineering you can extend this quite far, but yeah, the higher it is, the better it just goes. Simple as that. Life support, sensors, all have their own little stats that you can read, but generally speaking, the higher it is, the better. Or if you want to go for the maximum jump range, always stick with D rated. Of course, you don't always need to go with the highest grade, or rather highest class. In some of them, you can actually go on the lowest one. Let's see now. Um, you can pick even one E rated uh, power distributor. You can see that it will reduce the amount of power consumed soon, it will increase the jump range and so on and so forth, so be smart about what you pick. However, with a power distributor, well, each has different amount of power that they can store, and if you go too low, you won't be able to boost. Of course, the higher tier it is, the faster it regenerates the energies as well as higher uh, capacity it has. Again, through engineering, this will increase to no end. And finally, the fuel tank. Again, the same thing. You can go actually with the lower end, increase the jump range. However, you might not actually be able to make a jump with that sort of a fuel tank. However, every new ship always comes with the highest fuel tank, so you don't need to worry about equipping here anything. And now then let's finally go to optional internals. Here you can see I have equipped a couple of things already, but here you can equip anything your heart desires. You can always clear it out and start from a fresh build, which I do recommend with every fresh ship you just bought, because, well, they usually load it up with some crap that you don't need anyway. I'm not gonna go in detail as to what each thing does, because right now you just wonder what everything means, right? So, first of all, AMFMU, this allows you to fix the internal modules when you're, you know, in deep dark black or whatever else you're doing, essentially. Cargo racks, self-explanatory. Collector limpets, and you're gonna see quite a bit of other limpets. These are the programmable things that do the thing that you want to do. Collector limpets, for example, well, self-explanatory. They collect the stuff that uh, either you have targeted or just collects anything that is in vicinity of you. Uh, the contamination limpets, they are good against uh, anti-xenos whenever you... Whenever you get the space aids, basically, that's when they are good. FSD booster. Actually, I recommend unlocking this as soon as possible, but basically it allows, or well, boosts your ship a bit more and allows you to travel further with each jump. And that comes at the cost of a little bit of uh, power draw and mass. But uh, considering that it increases the jump range, you don't care about the mass uh, negative. After that, we have fuel scores, probably the most important thing around, uh, at least for the newbies. Whenever you buy a new ship, I recommend equipping your ship with at least one fuel scoop, even if it is the absolute lowest tier fuel scoop. As long as you have one, you probably won't run out of fuel that easily. After that, fuel tanks. Uh, these are extra things that will take basically space. Imagine a cargo rack, but only for fuel. There you go. 
Then we have the fuel transfer limpets. They do exactly what they say they do. They take the fuel from you and transfer it to the target. Simple as that. This is how you often rescue people that have uh, ran out of fuel and forgotten the fucking fuel scoop, damn it! So never forget it, okay? Moving on then, hatch breaker limpet. Now, if you're a pirate, this might interest you, because this literally breaks the hatch and uh, the spews out, if I remember correctly, it was 9 to 11 units of cargo from your cargo hatch each time you send a hatch breaker to break the hatch. So if you're up for some piracy, this is gonna be something that you might actually need. After that, the hull reinforcements. Now, this thing is probably the most used. By equipping the hull reinforcement, you just simply increase your ships. Let's see, where is it? Total mass, total damage. Nope, there we go. That's the integrity. Basically, you increase your ship's uh, overall uh, hull or HP. And some of them come with a little bit of resistance, depending on which you pick. But uh, yeah, uh, caustic resistance, don't don't get it. It's it's pointless. Don't waste your time for guardian hull for They're shit. We have metalloy hull for Exactly the same thing. Why do? Why are they in the separate category? I still don't understand. But there you go. In any case, metalloy hull reinforcements have the same thing. They can't be engineered though, and they have a little bit more caustic resistance than the guardian ones, and it's not worth it. It, it simply is not worth it. Don't get this. Don't waste your time getting this, please. Moving on then, uh, we have the module reinforcement. Yes. It's not enough that you have enough hull. As a matter of fact, as I said previously, with penetration, or ENOUGH penetration, your opponent can disable your ship without letting your ship drop below 50% armor or health. So you might be still alive, but your thrusters are out, your weapons are out, everything's dead. So making sure that your module reinforcements are equipped from time to time is a good idea because they absorb up to 60% of the damage to internals, making sure that your internals actually survive the encounter rather than just being a one-shot deal from somebody's railgun. And of course, unlocking Guardian Module Reinforcement is highly recommended, mostly because they simply have slightly more integrity. That's it. These cannot be engineered by them. After that, passenger cabins. If you ever want to do passenger missions, this is what you're gonna need. After that, the planetary vehicle hangars. Now, this is where the SRV will live. There are two types of uh, planetary hangar or vehicle hangars. One that consumes more power, the other one that simply is heftier. You pick whichever one is more fitting for you. Of course, the higher it goes, the more SRVs you are able to host. For example, the highest one is four. The lowest one is one. After that, we got Prospector Limpets. Uh, these are for mining. You shoot the thing at the rock and it tells you what is in the rock. Uh, simple as that. The Recon Limpets. Now, these are... Well, they are basically for uh, hacking into terminals if you want to do some jailbreak mission. Basically, rescue missions and so on and so forth. If you want to go and hack something, this is what you're gonna basically need. Most of those missions don't pay very well, so I don't recommend. Now, refineries are probably the most important thing for the mining because without this, the broken off rock chunks, you won't be able to transfer into solid sellable things. So always make sure to not forget this. Also not forget limpets and mining laser and mining is uh, is a thing. I made a video about it, so check it out. Anyways, repair limpets. This will only repair your hull. It won't repair the internals. Now, if you want to fully repair your ship, except for maybe one or two specific modules, you need to have AFM... AFMs... A, AF... AFM... Why is it called AFM? Well, anyways, AFM use. Right, you need that, and you need repair limpets to fully repair yourself. Also, you can repair someone else, just like with the fuel transfer limpet. Just target someone. Then we have research limpets. Now, these are for gathering samples from Targoids, so unless you're really going for the science stuff, um, you know, kind of pointless. You can sell the sample later on, of course, as well. But it's not paying that much, and it's uh, really just for plot reasons or whatnot else. And then we have the frame shift drive interdictors. In Supercruise, these modules allow you to pull people out through, well, completing a mini game, but allow you to pull them out of the Supercruise and do with them what you want. And then we come to the flight assists. Now, these are modules that allow you to, 
well, basically not play the game, but in a good way. They are assistances that allow you to just take your hands off the wheel and let the computer do the thing, or auto park, if you will. Super Cruise Assist allows you to basically go from point A to point B with a little bit of input, and it automatically just does it, and you can leave the PC, or, well, if you're having troubles or whatnot else, you can use it for that reason. And as for the docking computer, well, that is pretty self-explanatory. Well, it is basically an auto-parking feature. It's a good accessibility feature that, for some weird reason, elitists get mad. And, um, yeah, they're weird. But regardless, enjoy it, use it, I recommend it. And then we come to the shield cell banks. Well, these are, you can consider these as more of a shield regenerating one-time consumable thing. When you trigger them, they slowly spool up and then regenerate rather rapidly your active shield. However, if you don't have shields on, it does nothing but overheat your ship. This is where actually that heatsink might come in handy quite a bit. But regardless, this is a great way to prevent from your shields to break in the first place and upkeep that ability to not get module damage. And then we finally come to the surface scanners. Well, to this day, after six years, there's only one in this category, and that is the detailed surface scanner. This module allows you to probe the planets, which allows you to see extra information about the planet, as well as to discover interest point. So whenever you see somebody mapping a planet, this is how they do it. Or rather, this is the module that is required to do it. So for all the explorers, this is always a must carry. And that's about it on the optional internal. However, there is one important thing that you must see. Now, let's say you equipped a planetary vehicle hangar. Now, of course, back in the day with Horizons, you can still see that there would be a SRV underneath this module. You can equip it there. However, these days, you have to remember that equipping planetary vehicle hangar does not mean that you have the vehicle in the bay. So what you need to do is go to the vehicle base. And here you can equip whatever vehicles you are able. Currently, there is only one Scarab available, however, with leaks, there was a hint for a new SRV coming uh, relatively soon, who knows, maybe in a half a year or so. And that's generally all that you need to know, or all the information that you will see about these modules and what each is good for. Just watch out for the power consumption, the speed, and the jump ranges that each change or alter. And there you go, surprisingly a longer form type of video, more or less an experiment if you will, but hey, if you enjoyed this kind of a tutorial or at least explainer, do let me know. As always, for these super long form videos, I always credit the biggest supporters on Patreon, YouTube or Twitch. So there you go, you generous souls, and thank you for supporting. And if you too want to join in, well, there's a link for the Patreon most of all down below. Oh, and if you have some extra questions, well, do join my Discords, why not? But as for now, well, that's about it.